Dobro večer, poštovani gledalci. Gledate finale televizije OBM. Danas svi pričaju o utakmici Barcelona, Paris Saint-Germain. Zaista nevjerovatna utakmica i istorijska pobjeda Barcelone rezultatom 6-1. Ostavila je dubog trag i nevjerovatna jedna priča. Barcelona se plasirala u četvrt finale Lige prvaka. Kada je u pitanju Liga prvaka, naredne sedmice u našem programu očekuje nas još i utakmica između Monaka i Manchester City-a. Večeras razgovaramo o nečemu zanimljivom što se dešava već neko vrijeme u glavnom gradu Bosne i Hercegovine. Naime, od septembra prošle godine krenula je Juventusova futbalska akademija. U nastavku pogledajte kratki prilog, a onda ćemo se koncentrisati na našeg večerašnjeg gosta. Hi Hall, I'm Atomer Kuri, head coach of the Juventus International Project. It's my second time here in Sarajevo. Last time it was uh, like the end of summer, so we were outside. Tonight we are here in the Malak Regency Hotel. It is a beautiful uh, card covered. Uh, what you can see, the, the guys are working really well. They are improved a lot from uh, last time and so I hope uh, they will continue their work how they did uh, uh, until now. Uh, the head coach of the academy, Hannes Memic, was, as you can see from the page, uh, last week was in Turin. He received the, the straight the t-shirt of Juventus from Pjanic. So my goal now is to, is to try to convince him to give, him, to, give to me the Pjanic t-shirt. I, I hope he will do it. Thank you guys. I, I wait every one of you here in the Academy of uh, Sarajevo. Thanks. Dakle, poštovani gledalci, moj večerašnji gost je Mateo Merkuri, trener iz Juventusove akademije koji je ovdje u posjeti Juventusove akademije u Bosni i Hercegovini u glavnom gradu. Mateo, bienvenuti, welcome to Bosnian capital and finale. Thank you. Thank you. How do you feel here? It's your second time here? It's my second time, yes. I came last September for the opening of the academy and that's my second time here. Did you catch up uh, time to see some interesting places here in yeah, Sarajevo? Yeah, not, not, not this week, even because for me it's a bit cold. But no, last time uh, yeah, I had time to, to go Come in Come on, Mashkasha. it's cold in no, Torino no, also. Uh, yeah. <laughs> last time I it's time, Olympic city like Sarajevo. Yeah. Yes, last time I went uh, to the city center in Barskasha and I had time to spend there. It's, a very, it's an amazing city, it's very interesting. Did you taste some food? Yeah, last time as well. Yeah. Now this, this with time, I'm just thinking about work. Just practice training. Yes, training. Okay, Matteo, uh, everybody uh, today is speaking about last night game between Barcelona and Paris Saint-Germain. Yeah. Uh, did you watch it? Did you see what's happened? Yeah, I, di I, I didn't see all the match. I just see parts of the match in the end. I saw the, hi the highlights. It was, I think, an historical result. Uh, I th it's not, I think. Is it an historical result? And uh, I think nobody expected this kind of, uh, of uh, result in the end and uh, especially when it was like 85, 86 minutes and it was like 3-1 and you couldn't expect that. How could you, how could you uh, explain uh, that happened something like that? Uh, Barcelona didn't play it so great, didn't play anything amazing but got scored six goals. Yeah, you cannot expect. Uh, it's only mental but you could see from the beginning there was something wrong. I mean, the first two goals that they got, uh, I mean, Paris Saint-Germain was just like lack of attention. And it, y you must have experience of this match to, to really see how and what is going to happen. And in this, even if PSG has got amazing champions player, maybe Barcelona playing home and uh, going to zero and yeah. But of course, when you are free one and like it's missing like four minutes, five minutes to the 90s. Can we at all explain uh, what was happening in the minds of Paris Saint-Germain players? Probably they just were scared to win. Sure, they were scared to win. They didn't feel sure. They didn't feel like uh, I'm a strong player. I'm, I'm just scared to not to win. And yeah. I, I saw the last, the last two minutes when they were 5-1 and there was just making falls because they weren't they didn't feel like a normal player you know how they are no normal they are champions by but how they feel normally and that would, uh, when that ball uh, flies to the yeah uh, uh, 
and the... everybody forgot about <laughs> there was no one just yeah uh, we will uh, speak uh, later about champions league uh, now we will focus about uh, juventus academy yeah. here in bosnia and herzegovina yeah can you tell us about that project yeah it's a project that uh, we started with the camps in 2013 with uh, with our partner here is uh, it's going well it it can go it can go better we got actually 50 kids we are uh, aiming to have much more as uh, we have uh, in other uh, in other academies in the world uh, we are actually training at uh, malak regency in a covered field so we are uh, uh, looking forward to um, for our training field outside because spring is coming so and we hope we are going to have uh, more kids in the, in the future sure for the next season uh, we start uh, this morning uh, special programs uh, with the schools, so we are trying to uh, give to all the kids the opportunity to, to see how, how we train and uh, how our, uh, our methodology here in uh, Sarajevo. What is the main purpose of uh, Academy? The main purpose of the Academy is to give to all the kids the opportunity to train how we train our uh, kids, our players in, uh, in Vinovo. So we export here our uh, methodology, we export our uh, uh, method, our um, uh, kind of uh, training, our, our way. We know uh, that Juventus have uh, great, uh, great teams in these categories, yeah. uh, all, all the way to the first team. Uh, what, was the, what was the idea of uh, that uh, youth program? Of our, um, we have our professional academy, which is in Vinovo, then we have uh, uh, our academy, which is open to everyone in Turin, we've got like 1,200 uh, 1, kids there. And um, yeah, our, our main goal on this kind of project is to give to all the kids the opportunity to train in, with our methodology. We coach the coach, that's why I'm here, uh, or the other manager comes here to every time support the part and support the technical director to to improve, uh, to develop always something better, something that which is very close to how we train in uh, Vinovo, the professional players. All those academies uh, from big clubs have something special. What is uh, that Juventus Academy makes different? About? Uh, for me, it's how, um, how we train them. I mean, our methodology is not only technical methodology, it's not only tactical methodology, it's like a, a way of teaching. It's how we take relationship with the kids, how they can enjoy the time with us and in the same time learn, uh, learn about football. But not only learn about football, because our main purpose is to give them the best opportunity to grow up as a person. Because in the end, we know that 99% of the kids won't become professional player. What was uh, what is your plan uh, for uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Sarajevo? Uh, to at the moment to focus on the academy and to improve. Uh, we are a, a very good technical staff, and some of the coaches uh, we saw that in this video. Uh, yeah, they were, were at uh, Vinovo. Uh, we have a very te good technical staff. I hope that. Most more kids are going to enjoy it because it's a really nice experience. As I saw in the video, as I said in the video, Anis Memic, the head coach, was in Vinovo last week. We had an uh, um, international course for uh, the coach of our academy, like 15 attended the, the course from uh, Australia, from China, from uh, all Europe. And was an, I think for him it was an amazing experience because it was not only the, a way to, to learn more from professional people that we have in touring coach and teacher psychology teacher eh? but he had he had also the opportunity to meet Pesotto to meet Allegri he, he had the opportunity to to meet Pjanic and so I think it was a amazing experience for him in this fu future period with uh, this academy here do you have any plans any uh, maybe interesting visits or something Oh, we hope, we, we, uh, Anis invited him, I, I hope uh, we'll have Pjanic one day, I don't know when and if he will have the chance to come, I hope so. Uh, so there is a chance? There is a chance, <laughs> it's a, there is always a chance, no? uh, there is a chance to come. Uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll have a camp this summer, as uh, usual in the US University, uh, yeah, International University in Sarajevo, we'll have a camp there where 
three coach from Juventus will come. And then I think September we start again in the, the next season. Can you compare the kids from uh, Italy and kids here in, in I, that football context? I, I mean, I can compare this. I, I didn't see much about I only saw our kids. So it's difficult to have a comparison, even because in Italy I know a lot about that. I grew up there and so I, I have a lot of experience in that. Uh, in that country, in, in my country. Uh, but what I can say is that usual Balkan players are uh, technically very good from what you can see on TV or whatever. If you saw all the players that came out from this area, they are really, really good. Uh, I, I read uh, some uh, Gianluca Viali biography yeah. where he speaks about uh, that Italy players from little age Yeah. are used to play on result. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, I used to travel a lot in the last two or three years. It's not only our, uh, I think, lack. Or I think... It's a misunderstanding that runs all over the world. People think to the result. What did you do? You won? Ah, uh, yes, I won. Oh, I didn't win. The kids don't mind if they win or not. Yeah. They are happy or they just when, be when a bit sad on for one minute. But when they finish the match, it's finished. So, yeah, the, in Italy there is as well this kind of uh, coach that are minded of the result, especially when they are very small. I mean, from 6 to 11, 12, it doesn't matter what happens. Dakle, poštovani gledalci, idemo kratko na reklame. Nakon toga, kao što rekao, pričat ćemo u nastavku o Ligi prvaka i naredne sedmice nas očekuju ove preostale utakmice osmine finala. Dobro došli nazad u studiju finala televizije OBN. Večeras razgovaramo sa trenerom iz Juventusove akademije, Mateo Merkurijem. Odlična je to prilika da razgovaramo o tome šta Juventus radi ovdje u Bosni i Hercegovini, ali i da porazgovaramo naravno o uzbuđenjima u Ligi prvaka. So, Mateo, we spoke about this academy here in Sarajevo. What are you doing in all other academies all over the world? You have 25? Yeah, we've got 25 academies, so it's a project that is uh, improving, growing up a lot, uh, especially from where we start, it's not that so far. And there are uh, academies that the first are like having many kids, they're going having a very good technical level we are achieving. So it's, it's a very interesting project because it gives to everyone the opportunity to play and it gives to everyone the opportunity to, to grow up in, a, in the right environment. And so it, it runs from Argentina that we will open Monday to until Australia, where, uh, and it's, so it's, it takes all over the world. Juventus uh, is a club that has uh, most uh, fans in Italy, uh, most uh, training schools in Italy. Uh, how, many, how many kids train under the Juventus? Uh? All over the world. Or in Italy? Uh, no, in Italy we got some, we got not many academies, we got only 20. But the 20 that uh, is more a technical project where we need to find players. While the, our project all over the world is just is to give them the best opportunity to train and to export our model all over the world. Okay. So it's to, to try to grow up best players that we can in Italy. I, I, uh, the first player that crossed my mind is yeah. uh, Marquisio. Yes. He, he went cr uh, through Juventus school. Yes, and there is Rugani as well, no? And yeah. hopefully Kane one day. Yeah. So. Okay, uh, we spoke about uh, last night game between uh, Barcelona and Paris Saint-Germain. Generally, uh, what do you think about Champions League this season? In group phase, there wasn't any surprises. Favorites got through yeah. pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. I think there is a a, a gap you now between the, these clubs and the others. So uh, the main club are going over. Us. And Spain, if Sevilla and Atletico Madrid uh, will win, will have four teams in the quarterfinals. Yeah, we we did the broadcast the first game between Real and, okay. and Napoli. 
uh, when uh, when was the score the same? Yeah, three to one. What yeah. do you think about that game? Oh, I mean, Napoli is a Napoli is a very interesting team for the future. It's got very very good uh, players, very good players for the future, and uh, I mean they play they play well. So, but there is a gap experience now, not only physical. So, and uh, what do you think about two goals uh, that Sergio Ramos scores from? Uh, Sergio Ramos Corner. is usual uh, to yeah. uh, to do this kind of. Uh, I mean, goals. How come that uh, he's an, the player? He's, very, that he's an amazing that player, and you you can take care of him in a way. You can take care care of him in another way, but he's strong. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, here at TV Obian, uh, we broadcast Champions League uh, before uh, for, for for four seasons or uh, already, uh, and before two weeks we watched uh, the game at Dragao Stadium, Porto Juve. It was uh, two zero for. Yeah. Juve. It was a vecchia signora. <laughs> yeah, it was a good match. Two zero away is a good result. But as you, it was, as we saw, we watched last night. You never know, so you must take care a lot of Porto. Okay, we we have a, another commercial breaks, and we will continue this story about Champions League. Ida mo nešto ne reklame. Gledajte finale televizije OBN sa mojim gostom Mateo Merkurijem. Razgovaramo o Ligi prvaka. So, Mateo, vi spoke about first game between Porto and Juve next Tuesday. It's a rematch in Torino. Will you watch that game? Yeah, I will. Of course. I won't be in Turin, but yeah, I will watch the match. What do you think, how will go? Yeah, I don't know. You will have a big advantage from first. Yeah, we win win two zero. It's a big advantage. You need to to manage this advantage. You will play good in the last couple of years, winning Serie Serie A in a row. Yeah, five times. Five times. It's going to be. And the Champions League is something that missing. Yeah. You had the finals two years ago. Two years ago. And now Juve seems uh, stronger than ever in this yeah. last year. Yeah, it looks like, but you know, two, two years ago, uh, no, nobody expected and it arrived in the final with Barcelona. And last year, lost just in the uh, in, in that game with Bayern, Bayern yeah. yeah. It was crazy game. It was crazy game. Uh, and uh, what do you think about Bayern uh, this year with your Italian, yeah, Carlo Ancelotti? Yeah, he's doing well. He's doing very well, especially in the match that are important. So yeah. they won easy this 10-2 uh, aggregate yeah. score in, in two games against, against Arsenal. Arsenal. Uh, what, uh, what, what do you think about uh, these uh, English teams that uh, they couldn't do anything in I don't know. In Champions it, it, League. It's, it, it's a strange situation. I mean, last year won Leicester the Premier League. In this year, uh, Chelsea, who was coached by Conte, is doing very well. But the other team looks like they are absent. So some sometimes one team win, sometimes it lose. Next time maybe they win two, then they lose. Then so they have, and, and then, have not in, consistency. Have not consistency in this way, and also in Europe now it looks like this. Uh, there is Manchester that will play in Monaco. So yeah, of course uh, we're doing that uh, uh, that game in the broadcast uh, next Wednesday. Uh, Monaco, Manchester City. In the first game, was uh, five to three for City. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We expecting a, a really interesting uh, rematch. Yeah. Uh, what do like you this? think? Who is in advantage? Uh, is in advantage absolutely. Uh, can uh, Monaco gr uh, playing great this season? Yeah, yeah, playing great. He's playing great. There is uh, even uh, Nizza is doing well. Yeah. In the same, With Balotelli. So, yeah. It won't <laughs> be easy for PSG. So especially now that they have this. Uh, yeah. Like heavy thing in the brain, no? Can, can, can they make come back from this hole? <laughs> it takes time, I think. <laughs> it will take time. Yeah. Um, so, what do you think? Uh, who will win Champions League this season? Don't just tell me Juve. Uh, I don't know. There, there is. I mean, there is Bayern Munich, Barca, Real, Juventus. All, all the names of the favorites are the same. Yeah. I the, know. From the year fr I know. to the year. And maybe there will be the usual surprise, which is not more a surprise than Atletico Madrid. 
So listen, uh, Juve have a, a lot of uh, big base of defense here. Yeah. Uh, at the Balkan, Bosnia also. Yeah, we had few players now in the past, not only few. So maybe for this reason, and we can uh, we have now Pjanic, which is I you think one of the most representative. Yeah, then we have the Balkans, all the Balkans play Manzuk Piazza. Piazza, if we can remember, maybe Jugovic or yeah, of course. Yeah, I Jarni, can remember Kovac, Jugovic and yeah, that great many, generation, many generation players, yeah. of the uh, Juventus. Many players from this area because this area is uh, full for me of. Uh, this uh, kind of players, and we hope Piazza will be one of the next really strong One of, of the strongest rivals uh, for the Juventus in Champions League uh, this season is, of course, uh, defender uh, of the title, Real Madrid, uh, yeah. with, the, with the, uh, Zinedine Zidane on the yeah. bench. Uh, we spoke about them, uh, they had the uh, win here uh, in the Nap uh, against the Napoli uh, two days ago. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about them? About Real Madrid, yeah, yeah. I mean, Real Madrid is uh, it's Real Madrid. It's <laughs> a traditional, very one of the most important clubs in the world, and they have the same team that is playing from a long time. You know, Pepe Ramos, yeah. uh, Modric, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, Bale. They didn't change a lot. They didn't change a lot, and if you think that Hamas Rodriguez is not playing a lot, I mean, yeah. oh, it's crazy. Uh, so, uh, how will things go in uh, Serie A? Battle for Scudetto. Yeah. Uh, you will have a, a good advantage. advantage. Yeah, yes, good advantage. good advantage. Even if they draw last time, but I mean, you cannot win every time. You need. <laughs> there are also the other teams. There is a long season. You have to play uh, Italy Cup. You have to play Champions League. You have to play uh, the, the Serie A. So it's a long trip, even if you have uh, many players. but. You need to find always the best eleven to for that match in a good uh, good condition to have a good performance. So it's not easy to manage. Okay, Matteo, uh, uh, it was pleasure to speak yeah. someone from Juventus here in in my for, show. For a pleasure, uh, was a pleasure for me. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope we will see you again. Yeah, thanks. Dakle, poštovani gledalci, došli smo od kraja ovog izdanja finala televizije OBN. Tu smo ponovo narednog četvrtka u isto vrijeme. Doviđenja.